Shout Factory TV, changing the channel. The only person involved in the process beside me was the director, Herb Ross, in the process of adapting uh, the book. And there were two things that I think are sort of worth remarking on. One is, from my point of view, uh, I thought, what's the real problem with adapting a famous mystery story into a movie is that everybody already knows the ending or the gimmick or the whatever. Um, when you saw Scott Turo, Turo's Presumed Innocent, when we read the book, it was a big surprise when we learned who'd done it. But after, you know, months on the bestseller list, the, the movie comes out with Harrison Ford, and we know who'd done it. And so it's not going to be a surprise. And I thought, okay, if I'm getting to do this again, then I'm going to change the mystery so that people just can't relax in the second half of the movie once Holmes meets Freud and know what's coming. It's got to be different. And I had no particular loyalty or reverence uh, for what I had written, um, which is interesting because my director, Herb Ross, had, he was overflowing with an insistence that nothing that people love be left out. Case in point, the tennis match, my dreams <laughs> addition to the novel, which I said, no, 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 we can't have a tennis match in the middle of this movie. It's got nothing to do with anything, and people are, well, the whole movie is going to slow down to a stop while two people play tennis. And Herb says, but everybody loves that scene. It's, you know, can't you make it pay off at the end? Well, we did. And, and he, I guess, was right because the scene plays in the movie.